How do you get the big picture on fishing kits? Examine over a thousand of them. So Matt, so you have an interesting story here. Uh, someone did some pretty deep research on fishing kits and we found a lot of the common characteristics uh, that you can see across a large uh, swatch of them. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting read. So Imperva put this report together, analysis of 1,009 fishing kits. And um, they did get a whole bunch of different fishing kits that they found on the internet, either ones from an older data set or like daily updated ones. And they took a look at the different aspects of them. And from having looked at a good deal of them myself, I recognized a lot of the sorts of things they're talking about. Um, seems like a lot of them are built in order to collect credentials and ship them by email to the person who is benefiting from them. So maybe I should step back a bit and sort of walk through the life cycle of a fishing kit. Uh, so there's a small group of people out there who have the technical knowledge on how to build one. You know, build something that looks like a real website uh, that collects the credentials when somebody types them in and then packages them and sends them an email to whoever's operating the kit. So there's a large, a very small group of people who have that knowledge, but a larger group of people who serve as the customers who buy the fishing kits, set them up, collect the credentials to one of their email accounts. Uh, so it seems sort of like, you know, it's it's not like every single fishing kit you've encountered uh, was, you know, written by or handcrafted by the person who put it on the server. Uh, you've got, a, you know, sort of a, a difference of populations there. Uh, one of the other things that I found personally interesting is that a number of these kits are given away for free. And what happens in a lot of those cases is that somebody who is very technically savvy creates the kit and puts in a little bit of a back door so that anytime the kit captures somebody's credentials and sends them to the person who bought the kit, it also sends it to the original author. And for example, I said bought the kit in that case, but you know, if someone said to somebody who's just getting nude into phishing, hey, here's a free one, go ahead, you can, you can use it for free, it's a gift, they're benefiting because they're sort of still going to get those stolen creds without all the work of setting it up uh, on a server somewhere. So it's sort of a little bit of a parasitic relationship there. So these kits themselves often come as like a, a zipped up file, uh, sort of like the, the pages themselves that sort of present to the user and then also the processing backend that sends the files out. Uh, and in my experience, I've seen a lot of situations where that whole kit, the package version, like a zip file, stays on the server and whoever deploys it sort of just leaves it lying around. Uh, and in that form, you can actually take a look at the source code, which is fascinating. So I thought it was a very interesting read. If you're just getting used to the idea of fishing kits to understand what they are and how that whole uh, ecosystem works, I think it's a really good uh, write-up to read. Um, and even if you are sort of experienced in it, just seeing you know, some of the things that you know, a larger view of the world gives you from a, a report like this, I think is also fascinating. So the article mentions that uh, sometimes uh, they forget to remove maybe some files or some directories that are part of the kind of the phishing kit framework and that makes them sometimes easier to identify. Yeah, that is kind of cool, right? So I think the, the folks who are technical who create the kits understand exactly what needs to be there and what doesn't. And the guys who are using it as, as end users may not and just sort of leave artifacts lying around like zip files or extra directories or like temporary things or in, like instructions. So like if you know where to look within the, the, the website, you might be able to locate these sorts of phishing kits as they are on the server. And if you had a good way to do that at scale, you could kind of identify you know, quickly, you know, is this a phishing kit or not? And whose is it? Who wrote it? And maybe even who paid for it or who, is, who the user is? Because there's like configuration files and things that if you're going to use it, you have to drop your, your receipt, recipient email in or you have to drop in um, the subject of the email that you're sent, you know, that's it sent. There's, there's all sorts of little bits and pieces that um, can be used to show who's actually operating the kit. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, it, it's a really great story for, you know, people, again, who are kind of not familiar with these kits, you know, just how common they are. And, you know, as you mentioned, how they're really all based on kind of one small set of uh, kind of initial kits.